Sweden and welcome to this test of Yutong IC12E. Here we are with a brand new Yutong IC12E. It's a brand new intercity bus with a range of more than 500 kilometers on one battery charging. And this bus have already been on the road driving from uh, UETP fair in Hamburg and now on the way up to Norway. It's a distance that is more than 1200 kilometers. We are going to test it how low we can get the energy consumption down and also how fast it is to charge. Welcome to this test drive on YouTube. This is maybe one of the most unique intercity buses for the market right now. With one single charger you can charge 350 kilowatt. If you split it in two you can charge it up to 460 kilowatt. Now we are at Helsingborg. This is a city south in Sweden and we are charging for the second time on this trip. The first time was in Hamburg. They uh, charge 100%, drive all the way to Copenhagen yesterday with only 100 kilometers left on the battery. They came to Helsingborg and now they will charge up 100% again with two charging points at the same time. So that is something that uh, have not been done on this bus before. So let's see how that will work. Now we just try to charge with two charging points at the same time. But because of the calibration of the charging station, it's uh, not uh, connected to the bus. We could only charge with one charging point and that's 311 kilowatts, so it's enough. And in one hour we will have 100% fully charged bus and more than 400 kilometers driving range. Let's find the right position. We still have 80% left of the battery capacity. We have the switch handle for the driver position, the neutral reverse here. The steering wheel is uh, more or less similar to what you see in your private car. You have uh, multifunctional buttons. On the left side you have for the cruise control. You also have a lot of buttons. You have for the doors, you have for the kneeling, you have for the lights inside and the start and stop. One thing I feel is a little bit strange. They have put the key, the ignition key on the dashboard instead of uh, under the steering wheel. On my left side, you have for the window, electric side window. So you can open and close. And in front of me, we have the cluster. When you have the range, you have the, you have the energy consumption, you have the speed and the average kilowatts per kilometers is on this one 0.56. So that's quite low. You have the switch for the handbrake on the left side and it's a semi-automatic system. So if you open the door for the driver, then it's go on automatically. And you can also adjust the steering wheel. It's not so much, but okay. I, will, I can find the position that I'm, I can like. Then we are ready for takeoff. This is the first time I'm driving the new Yutong IC12E. This will be in service in Norway, in the area of Inland. It's a couple of hours away from Oslo, north from Oslo. My first feeling is that it's smooth, it's silent. And the throttle is really perfect. Now I have been driving this for approximately one hour and I feel right comfortable here behind the steering wheel. There's still a few things that I wish could be better. The digital mirrors, I got used to it after a while, but I still feel the color is not perfect. That's why I, uh, I had a feeling that it was a little bit dark. Like the radio is always, every time you start driving, it's always go on. There is a little bit too high sound on the turning signal. I think you can adjust it. And there is sound for everything. Instead of vibration in the seat, there is a sound in the dashboard. There is a little bit uh, too much um, noise when you are driving on the bad road condition. But as soon as you come on the better road condition, the noise was completely gone. So there's details that easily can be better. And I know they will make it better because they always ask the driver and always ask a journalist like me to give them a good feedback. 
really see that they got some inspiration from German brands like MIN and Mercedes-Benz. You can recognize a lot of details. First of all, as a driver, you recognize the, the gear handle, but you can also see in the roof and the seats and uh, how you regulate the back of the seat when you want to rest. That is identical to what I have seen in Mercedes-Benz and Zetra buses for some years back. One thing I don't like with this one, it's that they don't use the whole space they have inside. When I go all the way in the back, you have five seats, but they are moved forward with at least 15, 60 centimeters. And behind of that, there is only empty space. I have been in several buses where uh, you always found a lot of garbage behind the seat. And here you have a couple of cubic meter with space enough to your garbage. I don't say it because I want you to do it, but I say it because they should have made the back part of the bus a little bit different so they could use all the space for seats. As you can see here, the seats are in a dark fabric. It is nice. It looks a little bit uh, luxurious. And to be honest, this is a bus that's going on a normal school line in Norway. And to have these quality seats and quality fabric, this is luxury for the students, I think. Here you have a uh, possibility to rest your seats. You also have USB sockets here. And here you also have a stop button in the back of all the seats. We have been checking the energy consumption on this trip and it's very low. It's down on 0.65 kilowatt per kilometer. This is really good numbers. So let's see when we have this bus fully charged, if we can reach Oslo without having any stops on a charging station. One thing I can see here on the screen that uh, it's charged with less power now after the battery have reach 83%. It started with 311 kilowatts, now it's down on 216 kilowatts and it's falling a little bit. It means that when you charge from 80 to 100%, you have to push in the power in the battery. It is like when you are going to the restaurant and your stomach is full, but it's still food left on the plate and you have to eat it. You have to push it in. It's the same here with the power. You push the last power into the battery so you get 100%. That will take a little bit longer time than charging from 0 to 80%. Thank you for watching this video. And if you like what you see, just follow us on Instagram, on YouTube. See you next time. Drive safe.